All right, so I am headed um, out right now to a wedding in St. Augustine to use the Nikon D850 on it. Um, I'm pretty excited. I'm using that and the Tamron uh, 85mm 1.8, I think it's 1.8 uh, with vibration reduction lens. Pretty excited. I took a bunch of pictures with it. I've been testing it for the past couple days and it's freaking fantastic combo. Um, is it perfect? No. I mean, no camera's perfect, but it's it's real close. It's um, it's just amazing. With the vibration reduction on that lens, I was shooting at like f 1.8 at one fifteenth of a second, handheld, and it was it was fine. I mean, it was there was no shake. It looked freaking awesome. So that's like super rare to be able to do that. I mean, that's like almost impossible. Um, anything at a higher speed. It would obviously help quite a bit also but it's 85 mil so you're not gonna be shooting like big wide shots with a bunch of people but you never know it's mostly portrait stuff mostly headshots stuff like that uh, portraiture lens I'm gonna try it out I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of it how it performs today a um, bunch of different scenarios and I'm gonna vlog a few times here on this on this camera let you know what I think at different points during the during the ceremony and I might set this camera up and film some of me doing the uh, getting shots during the ceremony from the back of the church or the venue or wherever maybe do a couple shots with this just leave it on there and do a little not vlogging but some shots I didn't bring a tripod um, I hardly ever shoot on a tripod I brought a monopod in case I need to use the long lens from the back which I usually have to do on at the Leitner Museum it's a there's a big courtyard with a pond in front of it and they get married on this old bridge and you have to use a 200 to get to it um they, i mean you don't have to but it's good to use it and at that length at that time of the night in order to keep the shot steadier at a, without having to raise the shutter speed super high with that distance um i it's better to me to just slap it on a monopod and get it nice and rock steady and take the shots so i make sure i get good shots from up there so i had to stop off and grab a battery from the Walgreens or CVS these little the battery in my little remote from my remote start on my um, not my remote start for my remote my triggers for my flashes one of them's like a 12 volt battery for the trigger for the transmitter I always have to replace that stupid battery I guess I need to take it out after every use so that it's not wasting the battery apparently just sitting in the thing the battery dies so I changed it last time I went and did a shoot and I used the trigger a few weeks ago for some shots of my granddaughter. Pretty cool, I'll pop those up here. Um, but I haven't used it since, so it's just sat there and went dead. Anyway, I'm just rambling on. I'll let you guys know what I think of the D850 on a shoot. St. Augustine headed to the location right now over here to the Leitner Museum I'm early so that's good but I can go put my stuff up my little tripod thing little little mini gorilla pod thing broke the little piece just broke on it went to get the camera off and it broke so how lovely is that so anyway normally I set up bring my bag I'm in the in the bridal room right here and uh, this is where the bride's getting ready. And I guess I'll have to do a review of this camera after I shoot it, because I, I, I don't have my little thing, or I can just set the camera down and film doing stuff, like getting it out. Let me get it out. The 
D850 gets double strapped so that I can grab it quick, lift it up, boom, get my shot, boom, get my shot, keep going. Now I'm on my way back. Um, where am I? Boy, it's so dark. I'm on my way back uh, after shooting the wedding uh, with the D850 and the thing. It was awesome. It was perfect. I love shooting with it. I like the D500, but the D850 is just such a big step above that. And um, probably in the next week or two, we will see the newest. Um, anyway, we'll see the new uh, Nikon mirrorless cameras. They're supposed to announce two of them. One is supposed to be around three grand. If I'm going to spend three grand for a mirrorless camera, I'd rather get the D850. I mean, that's the price of the D850. And it's a ridiculous camera. It's not as good with video as the mirrorless probably, but I guarantee you them it's every bit as good as the mirrorless for photos, if not better. I don't mind the sound of a, of a shutter. Doesn't bother me. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a dream camera. The thing's ridiculous. The focus thing is spot on and fast, even in, even in low light, even in no light. When I get back, I'll uh, finish this review in the morning and I'll, I'll go through some of the pictures and show you the settings that I used and the pictures. And we'll, we'll go from there. Yesterday, I finished the wedding last night shooting with this beast right here, the Nikon D850. And uh, I gotta say, it was freaking, it was ridiculous. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is, they all wanna come out with mirrorless cameras, that's fine, but I'll take this over any mirrorless camera I've ever used by far. I mean, the Sony's nice that it's little, but I like the size of this, this is very comfortable. I was not tired walking around with this all night. It was not, my arms not sore. It wasn't like, oh my gosh. I, I'm, I guess maybe if you're like a lightweight or something and you don't want it, you don't, you don't, you're, you can't carry something heavy. I'm always been pretty strong and, uh, you know, it's never been a problem. I've always been, you know, pulled wire and stuff like that doing electrical work as an electrician. So this is not a problem. This isn't heavy. I mean, it doesn't weigh anything. It's not, my arm doesn't hurt the next day. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not too heavy. Now throw a, throw a 7200 on it, yeah, and you don't want to walk around with this in a 70 to 200. But the 7200 is the same size on a on a mirrorless camera, full frame mirrorless. It's the same size lens, so really the body itself is not that heavy on this D850. Um, other things I noticed that I really liked is um, besides the ISO button on the top making it super fast to change settings, um, the pinch the 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 touch screen. Let me let me get back on this. The D500 has a touch screen, but it doesn't. It's not anywhere near as useful as this one. This one has touch throughout the entire menu system. So I was finding myself being able to zip through the menus a lot quicker, a whole lot quicker. Go through the menus. Um, they need some improvements on and pinch the zoom real fast. I would actually. Here's something that I found that happened on this and I didn't expect it. I was showing customer, you know, showing the clients. I'd be like, hey, check out this picture. And I'd show them that I'd zoom it in with like that and they'd be doing it. People were reaching over and touching the screen and zooming out and swiping left and right just like, cause they're so used to using a phone. And I I was like, oh, okay, yeah. They're, cause I'm not used to people touching the back of my camera when I'm sitting here. But I, when I showed it to them, I was like, check it out. What do you think of that? And they're like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And they'd zoom and go back and forth. And they, they, were, they didn't even pay. I mean, they were just so intuitive that they just brought right up, started using it like it was a phone. Um, there was another guy that was shooting the videographer. They hired a separate videographer, which is strange because we do photo and video. And uh, the videographer had uh, Sony A6500s, A6300, you know, A7R, A7s, size like that. And they're tiny compared to this. We were sitting side by side with it. And, but even he noticed, I showed him the touch screen and I showed him how I can touch through the menus. And he was like, oh, that is so cool. He said, that's pretty cool. I was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And I showed him the SnapBridge feature. Now, here's the thing I want to jump on real quick on SnapBridge after using it 
for an entire wedding. Okay, you can set it up. It's it needs they need to work on the how it connects. See, here's the thing. I couldn't tell if it was connected. Like I'd say transfer images to my phone, and it would say it's the camera's currently connected. To what? It didn't say to connect it to this. There's no place in the camera saying to connect to something. Um, if I had it automatically upload the pictures to the camera, to, to the phone, it worked fine. I'd be taking pictures and I'd look on my phone, I'd open the SnapBridge app. I'll do it right now while I'm on here. I'll open the SnapBridge app and there's the pictures that I was taking as I was taking them, right? And that was really cool. That's another thing that was super handy. So I'm taking pictures, right? And I have the, my phone in my pocket. And when the customer wanted to see it, this screen is six inches. So it's big compared to the screen on the back of the phone. So what I'd do is I'd let SnapBridge do it. And as I'd get done, I'd click the image and I'd, I'd, make, it, I'd make it full size like that. And I'd show it to them. I'd say, there's, there's, there it is. What do you think? And they were like, how'd it get on your phone? So we were like, how'd you, you took it with your phone? I said, no, I took it with my camera. It transferred to the phone while I was sitting here taking pictures. They said, that is the coolest thing I ever saw. So it was super handy and you can zoom it in on the SnapBridge app. You can zoom in on the pictures. You can slide left and right and go through the pictures just like they were. And they're, they're not as high res as the ones in the camera, but you're looking at a tiny screen. You don't need to see a 45 megapixel picture on the back of the screen. So on the cam on the phone, it's ideal. So anyway, so that was a pretty good feature. But the problem was, was I clicked, you know, connect the phone and I couldn't tell if it was And then on the phone, it would start doing a thing. Like as I took pictures, I'd see the little thing going across on SnapBridge, like, oh, it's downloading pictures. But I had no idea it was downloading. I couldn't tell what setting actually worked. I was like, okay, is it, do I have to, like in the menu here on the, on the camera, I turned on air. Also, a quick way to fix it would just be turn on airplane mode and that would stop it immediately. Otherwise, I couldn't tell how to turn it off. Like send a smart device. Like if I click turn on air, see how I like you can just click. I can click and just, you know, click right on the thing, disable, whatever. Connect to smart device, send, ten, see it says send a smart device auto on. Okay, so that means I can automatically, does that mean I have to connect? Does that mean that as long as it's on there and it sees each other, it will start uploading the photos as I take them? I don't know. And so I, what I wanna be able to do is take photos, right? Have it automatically update them when I'm doing a certain thing. So if I'm doing detail shots, I want those automatically updated. If I'm doing the couple shots, I want those automatically updated. If I'm doing maybe the bride and bridesmaids, maybe not. Um, groom and groomsmen, maybe not. You know, like their, their, their portraits, maybe not. Maybe. If I'm doing general dancing, definitely not. I'm not wasting my, because I'm not going to upload pictures of people just generally dancing. But I am going to, uh, during the ceremony, I'm probably not going to upload those. Uh, those I can add at the end, like them coming down the aisle. If I get a good shot of that, I want to be able to click on it, go to it and say, yes, transfer that to my phone. But for everything else, I want to be able to turn it on and off really quick and say, okay, turn on now auto upload. Now I'm taking pictures of this, of whatever, you know, detail shots, boom, auto upload. Now I'm taking pictures of the couple, you know, this beautiful picture. I've got the flash behind them, flash in front of them. They're in front, you know, something really majestic. Boom. I want a picture of that so I can upload it to my, you know, to social media. And it would be nice if it could also automatically do copyright stuff, you know, put a bug on it for my name, but I'll check that. I'll check that later. Everything else about the camera I really like. The, uh, the menu was for, the menu's awesome being able to go, touch screen through the menu. I mean, that's, there's, I don't know another camera that does that. They were complaining that the Sony did let you do everything but that. It didn't make sense, you know, different cameras. I was like, this one does everything. Let's get back to the photography part. So low light photography, this thing's a beast. It's a beast, dude. It, it was focusing in almost complete darkness. Like I had the remote trigger flash on here. So I had the remote triggers and I had two flashes set up on opposite sides of the dance floor, you know, flashing down to light the dance floor evenly, fairly evenly. And, um, so it couldn't, it couldn't shoot out of, you know, it couldn't shoot anything out to, you know, get focus. And it was nailing focus 90% of the time. I mean, only 95% I'd say. In, in complete darkness. 
it was it was focusing really good. Sometimes I'd hit it if it was super dark and I'd see it hunt for a second and then go. But overall, even then, like when I got them coming down the aisle, it was it was dark in there. It was inside a it was an indoor wedding. It wasn't beautiful and outdoor, it was indoor. It was dark, it was lit by low light. There wasn't a lot of light in there. And when they came down the aisle, I was, you know, had flashes set up, but it was, I was, you know, just holding down the button and just continually focusing as they came down the aisle and hitting them. And it was, it nailed them. I mean, it did really good. Um, you know, out of those shots, there was only a couple that it missed that I could see. Uh, what I did was I put on XQD card, I had it, I had it load the raw files and then I did JPEG backup so that I can use those to quickly transfer to the thing. Normally I don't back up the JPEG. Now, normally I go raw, raw, right? But I wanted the speed. So raw JPEG, the JPEG, I used a super fast 128 gig card for the JPEGs. So I knew it was going to be fast, even downloading. And then the XQD card, a fast XQD card for for the for the raw files so that I would so I wouldn't you know buffer out on the card if I was shooting real fast which I was it's a wedding I'm not there's no there's nothing that fast action that I need to I, I'm not shooting birds in flight or anything so there's no real reason about the Tamron the Tamron lens it's um it's also badass it's also ridiculous so far it's my favorite it's my favorite lens that I've that I've used so far is this this lens this this combination this combination for weddings the Nikon D850 and the Tamron 85 millimeter 1.8 VR is it's magic for weddings I mean this is literally I saw a um, review from Tyler this guy Tyler that's uh, that does wedding photography shoots with Nikon shot with Sony's and stuff and he highly recommended this so I was like well, let me give it a shot you know let me try that now I know why because it's it's beautiful the lens is absolutely I'm gonna show you some pictures that these are unedited straight raw shots I'm gonna show them to you there it's beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful combination my impressions of the camera now I don't just automatically say you know a lot of times I say this is a great camera let me I'm gonna I'm gonna compare this to the D500 that I that I uh, reviewed earlier for the for the video side I was surprised by the D5 by the D500 um, this has the focusing of the D500 and then some so this seems to focus even better than the D500 um, I don't know if it's true or not I don't know if it's because it's a full-frame sensor the D500 goes to the edge um, the focus points are spread all the way across the frame because it's a DX crop sensor. It's technically the same exact distance apart because it's cropped in. So if you crop this image, if you focus, in other words, if I leave the focus points from here to here, right? If it's, a, if it's focusing from here to here on a full frame, cropped in, it's gonna focus from here to here. So, so in other words, in other words, technically you're not getting edge to edge focusing on the on the D500 and not on the D850. In other words, the D850 is focusing from here to here. See, I'm going to hold my hands up so that you see. From here to here, this is where the D850 is focusing, right? The D500 is focusing from here to here, but the image is cropped in, so it's from here to here. Right? So I'm in closer because it's cropped in. It's the same focus distance as here to here. It's the same because the image is closer. See what I'm saying? So if you shot the DA50 and focus from here to here, and then you crop the image into here, you're at the exact same focus distance, focus area as on the D500. So it has, the D500 doesn't necessarily focus in more area and wider area than the D850. The D850 is focusing and the D500 is focusing in the exact same area based on the the width of the frame, the size of the size of the crop. So the D, D850 is uncropped, so it's here to here. The D500 is cropped, so it's here to here, but I'm closer. So technically, if you shot the D850 and focus from here to here and then crop the image in, you're focusing edge to edge. So if you cropped it into FX or for to DX crop, you're in the same 
area. The D850 was much better in low light than the D8 than the D500. The D500 was good, but it did have more noise. It had more noise. I could see in the viewfinder, like even just looking through the thing, I could see that it was a little noisier. I brought the pictures in and I saw noise where normally at say uh, uh, 3200 ISO or or you know or 3200 or up ISO, I wouldn't see as much noise on 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 my other full frame cameras as I saw on the DA50. I mean on the D500. Now the DA50 supposedly has even more, but they're 45 megapixel images. So we're gonna check them out and I'll see how much noise I see in the images and I'll let you know when I look at the actual images here. But this is a real world review. I actually use this camera side by side with my other Nikons and I actually, I tried, um, one thing I did notice is I stuck my Sigma 24 to 70 on the DA50 and it couldn't, it couldn't focus with it. It couldn't, it was, it was flashing up little things. So if I, if I decide to go with the DA50, I'm going to have to get a, a another lens. But what I'd probably do is get this lens and like the Tamron 35 millimeter for my wide shots. So that's all I'd need. The wide, that, and a 70 to 200. Done. That's your full kit, ready to go. So I've got the long lens for uh, shooting in down the aisle when I can't come walk up, which I was able to walk up and shoot close with the with the D850. So my pictures are almost done. Let's check them out. And I'll give you my final thoughts on there after I look at the pictures. Let's see what we got here. So these are the pictures. Library, let's go back. That's, I mean, these are good. I'm just gonna pick a sampling. I haven't even looked at, I looked at a couple of these, but that was it. I haven't been looking at them. I haven't been judging any of them. Let's see, let it load. Super sharp. Super sharp, that was at 85 millimeter, ISO 2000. I mean, F5.0, so I can make sure that everything was in focus, even this one on the end. So that's it. ISO 2000. It's got slight grain, but it's not very, it's not very grainy. It's pretty good. ISO 2000. Let's take a look at this one. Clear, pretty clear. I was messing with the focusing. Cause see, she, uh, it's actually focused on this like, on her hands more than on her face. So her lips are in focus cause it's in the same plane as her hand. Let's look at something else. Let's see how this looks. Pretty sharp. This was uh, f1.8, that's why. Super shallow. So her hair is out of focus. Her eyes are a little bit out of focus. It seems like it got more around her nose right here. This, this part of her face got in focus more than this part. But still usable image. Alright, so let's see. This one's that's tack sharp. That's good. See this. See this hand is blurry. That's f three point five. So this is with the Tamron eighty five millimeter. We're looking at the original image. Image. I focused on this area because that's where she was putting it on. And see this hand's out of focus. This is out of focus. She's even slightly out of focus because she was out of the out of the plane. She was a little bit farther. No, she must have been too far forward too. Anyway, let's look at some let's look at some low light stuff. These pictures were outside. Look how awesome this is. You can see me in the mirror in the reflection. Tack sharp. It's tack sharp. Look. Tack sharp. All these are tack sharp. Outside. Of course you're outside. It's going to be tack sharp. Yep. Tack sharp on the eyes. Nice roll off in the highlights over here. But see, even like this. Like say we pick one of these. 
I posted this. This was good because I posted it to. Um, I was able to post it to Facebook. This I think it was this picture or this one. I posted this to Facebook because it, it automatically uploaded to my to my phone, so I was able to post it. But just like imagine the see the highlights are a little bit blown out. It's a little bit over highlighted. So let's go to develop. So just looking at this, if I just drop the highlights down, boom. Now look, now the highlights aren't blown out of their thing. The background looks good. There's a little bit of noise over here. There's somebody over here. I'd probably get rid of that. But look how look how awesome that looks. Right from just dropping the highlights down. Even if you raise the shadows just a hair. Add a little bit of clarity. Dehaze it just a hair. There you go. Ridiculously, ridiculously sharp picture. That looks fantastic. D850. Smoking hot. Huh. She was just sitting there talking. Her and her mom were talking. Trying to get some candid stuff. The guys. See, I blew this out on purpose. It's a little bit, it's a little bit over bright. But see how clear, sharp? Tack sharp on the eyes. Tack sharp. That's it. This was a, uh, a 6.3 because I wanted to make sure it was super sharp. And they were standing in front of a wall I didn't care to blow out. So I didn't care about getting super shallow depth of field. But just drop the highlights down. Boost the shadows. I can even drop the exposure down a little bit. There you go. Boost the contrast of hair. Dehaze it just a little bit. Boom. How's that? Even better. And look how clear that is. It's perfect. This guy's not looking at me. I don't know why he looked away. He's probably looking at me in this one. Yeah, he is. So, even if I took this and I said, well, let's... Let's copy the settings. Copy and just paste them to this one. Which is what I do a lot when I, when I go through editing. I'll just... I'll get ones that I like in front of the wall, all these in front of the wall, I'd paste it to all of them. So in other words, I'll go right through here. All these were shot in front of this wall. Highlight them all, right click, develop settings, paste settings. So now they all have the same, see, they're all the same. They all look good. All right, let's go to, uh, let's get some low light stuff. This was a cool shot. I got this, uh, I got her with her veil in front of the window. I thought it looked cool because this was all blown out and she was under her veil. The amount of detail retained is just ridiculous. Okay. Let's go some, let's do these low light ceremony shots. This is when they were coming in. They were walking up, walking down these stairs. And then the bridesmaids walking down that stair. 85 millimeter, ISO 4000, F3.5, 1 50th of a second. I had to speed it up to 1 50th because they were moving. I wanted to be able to get a shoot. So this is ISO 4000, this is low light. ISO 4000. It's a usable image because it's not a portrait. It's just this, just them coming down the steps. Look at that. Look at that star. It's pretty cool, huh? But like this here, just the girl coming down the stairs. If all you, ha if all you did was just um, do a little bit with the shy lights and hat, shy li uh, highlights and shadows, and then if you went down to noise reduction just punch in a little bit of noise reduction there we go now it looks a thousand times better ISO 4000 that, that's a workable image it's got a little bit of noise still but looks looks pretty good straighten it and stuff like that anyway let's see let's see here this is them as they came down the aisle so, I mean look at the focus they're moving. They're walking fairly quick. 
and that focus is nailing it. And it's dark. It's so dark that I'm, on, I'm at ISO 4000 right here. This is actually quite dark. These lights back here were just light in the sides. There was no light in the middle. I didn't have my flash on this camera because I was trying to see what it was like. I had my flash on my other camera, the flash controller with the flashes going off on the other camera because I wanted to see how this actually shot in low light without a flash. The flash doesn't do, do me any, it doesn't tell me anything about the low light high ISO performance of the camera. It doesn't tell me anything about it. So just add a little bit of noise reduction, bam. That looks pretty daggum good. Look at that. I mean, look look at the focus. Look how good it got. That is pretty daggum good. Now look at that image. Look. That looks very, very good without a flash. With 4000 ISO, that actually looks... I mean, anything over 3200 on my other cameras, it's you, you wouldn't want to use it. Seriously. And look at the focus. This is them walking. It hit every focus. This is... This is focusing the whole time. Look, it's in focus. It's sharp. So every, this is every shot. I didn't delete any shots. I got them at the back of the, at the back. They're in focus. These people are out of focus. They're in focus. That one could have slightly missed, but I don't think so. I think it's just because they're farther away. It's a little darker. Then the next one, in focus. Maybe some slight noise from them moving. I went as low as I could. Uh, 1 50th of the second I could have been at like 1 60th because they were walking fairly quick so you got a little bit of blur on the edge but not not much and I mean it nailed the focus on them it did good and then I got the groom's face the problem that I had with the groom's face with the groom is the videographer was right here and I couldn't get, I didn't want to get in his shot. He had a camera set up on a tripod right there. I would have just got a monopod and handheld one, like crouched down if I was him to get the shot instead of setting a tripod right up in the middle of the, oh well, to each his own. He moved as soon as they got it. As soon as they came in, he moved. But this is the 85 from back there. And this is ISO 4000 still. I left it in ISO 4000. Let's see. ISO so 4000 still, 85 millimeter, 118, one, one F1.8. I wanted to see how, if it would actually focus. Yeah. See how shallow, even with shallow focus, if I got her face in, in focus. See, yeah, see, she's, she's in focus. These people are out of focus. I got one shot where I got those people in focus. Where is it? I remember f focusing on the girl in the background. There it is. See? I got them. She's looking like she's in shock. <laughs> Back to them. Anyway. So, here they are about to kiss. This is at ISO 4000 again. F1.8, 4,000, F1.8. Here they are waving. See their hand motion. This is at uh, 1 60th. I brought it up to uh, F2.0, 1 60th of a second, because I knew that they were going to start walking a little quicker. But her face is in focus. His face is in focus. Her hand's moving, so she's got some hand blur, some motion blur. She must have been shaking her hand pretty quick. I should have had a little higher shutter speed. But honestly, they'll be happy with that. As long as they can see themselves happy and smiling. He's not smiling, but he's happy. Anyway, then they they walked down the aisle. And I actually switched to the one with the flash because I wanted to get a wide shot. Because as they get closer, they get cut off with 85 millimeter. And I didn't put that 7200, I was just using that same on that camera. So I flipped over to the other camera with the flash. Anyway, 
the good thing is, is I got them as they turned around and went through. That's how fast they went through and started hugging right around as you turn around down the steps. So this is a shot of them in that little room just as soon as they as soon as they were married and you can see the look on his face he's happy they just got married they're hugging that's a good shot even even here's the thing even if it's if it's a little bit grainy it's not very professional a little bit crooked it's backlit it's a little overexposed any any of that stuff is minor the important thing is that it's a good is that you get the you capture the moment that's the important thing when it comes to shots like this yeah, I can brighten the shadows. Turn the contrast a little bit. Probably gonna leave the D haze like it is. So that you can see his face. I'm trying to make it where you can see his face. But see all the grain? It's ISO 4000. Yeah, ISO 4000. So if I just add a little bit of noise reduction not too much because I don't want it blurry. That's good. See, that's still a good shot. Looks good. ISO 4000. It's a good shot. Very usable shot. Little bit of grain. Not a lot. Just a touch of noise reduction to fix it. But then I turned around and started getting the people as they came out. And it nailed the focus on everybody. I mean, I just turned around real quick. Just kept shooting. Okay. That one's slightly, that one looks like it might be, this one here like may, might be slightly out. Yeah, this one's slightly off. See, she's a little bit blurry. He's a little bit blurry. It missed the focus, but then the next frame, they're in focus. I can see that they're in focus. She's in focus. See, it's the bride's mom. In focus. See, as they walk closer, in focus. There's fairly low light, too. This There was no light. That's why it's at ISO 4000. No light. So now I'm ISO 3200, f2.0, 1, 1 uh, 80th of a second. I should have actually lowered that shutter speed down. There was a lot of movement back here, but I was trying to get her, him holding. And this is very dark. I'm trying to get him holding the kid. I wasn't anywhere near there, but they were showing pictures of stuff. I was actually far away. Here they are outside walking. ISO 200. Uh, one two fiftieth of a second f 2.0 could have raised the f stuff on this I got them walking to uh, they're walking down this cobblestone road there was a van there was this moving truck back here Penske I was just getting it set I was just getting it set up I was gonna move over the side which I did right here and I got this wedding planner lady I was just gonna get them walking down the cobblestone street this is actually the shot I wanted one like this like this I'm holding the dress and stuff. Or this even. Just a shot of them walking. These are good. ISO 125, 1 40th of a second, F5.6. See, we're at 1 40th of a second because of the, the uh, they're standing still. So I don't have to worry about them moving and making a blurry. And I'm holding the camera still with vibration reduction on the 85. So, the vibration reduction is obviously helping. Because they're quite a ways away. I had to move way back to get a wide shot. I'm just try, pr practicing. Trying, trying stuff out with the 85. That looks fantastic. Drop the highlights down. The haze of a hair. Perfect. Look at that shot. Look. Everybody's looking. Everybody's eyes are in focus. Everybody's. At 5.6, they're going to be. But, um... And it's outdoor. Let's look for some indoor stuff. More indoor stuff. Like I got a, their hands on the rings. This is F1.8, uh, 1 3 20th. ISO 3, uh, 320. Because I had it for something else. Just to get their rings. Wedding bands, nice shot. There's a little white spot there that was on her hand. That's actually on her hand. You can see it moves with her hand. See, her hand's back here. It's still on there. Anyway, um, 
So here they are cutting the cake. Here he is giving her cake. I'm at one thirtieth of a second, f2.8, ISO 1000. Now this is a dark shot. The, the videographer had a LED light. This is a dark shot. I just pulled the camera up. I wanted to see what it was going to look like hand holding one thirtieth of a second. And their movement, if they were completely still, it would have been perfect. But their movement, it's good. Yeah, see? One thirtieth of a second. So it's handheld, 85 millimeter. ISO 1000. Super clean image. Super clear. Look at this. You can see his face in the background. There you go. I mean, it's and it's spot on focus. It's perfect. Shot of the cake. Got a shot. Of, oh, moved around the backside. Got a shot of the knife. Got some people doing toasts. Let's see. I like some of these shots. I like this shot. See, he's toasting. He's blurry. They're in focus. I mean, now this is with the flash. This is with the flashes up on the balcony flashing down. So it, you can't tell the flash. There's a flash. See the shadow? Shadow. Because I, I actually lit it from both sides. I flashed it from both sides. But we're looking at 1 40th of a second. ISO 800. Um, 85 millimeter. Uh, F3.5. I had a 3.5 so I... Because they were in a line. They were fairly on the same plane. So I knew that it would probably get all three of them in focus. And it did. 3.5 got them in focus just fine. And then here's the dude. There he is toasting. Here's another shot with them this way she's in focus she's in focus she's a little bit blurry he's a little bit blurry she's in focus what is this f3.5 again so plane of focus is on her in this area in this area is in focus like the middle right here close enough still looks good all right here's some shots no flash or nothing some, some fruit cups I mean it looks artificial it looks so good what is this ISO ISO 800 3.5 one fortieth of a second I mean I'm just going through the pictures here and just looking at these pictures they're freaking fantastic now these are like the overhead shots I got with the flash so this is some dark and light you can get a good idea this is ISO 800 Shooting dancing footage, they're all clear. What's my what's my um F stop? I'm at F four point five. So I raise the F to get more people in focus. They are from my angle, I'm not looking across them, I'm looking down at them. So they're these are generally gonna be in the same focus plane. These in the front will be out of it, and these in the back will be out of it, but these right in here will be in it. Which is fine. Then they were doing some dancing stuff. Oh, this this was good. I came down and uh, they were doing some dancing, and I wanted to try and get it real quick. I jumped in there and tried to get some shots real quick, but that that's pretty decent. Look. Alright, so 1600, one fiftieth of a second. Could have been a little faster shutter speed. Cause see the see the ear rings bouncing, left a little trail, but it froze the rest of her pretty good. kids but this this is all see that he's too close now so they deleted that image got this guy pretty good yep Got her pretty good too. Yeah, I got a sweat on her. Yeah, it's good. Looks good. I'm pretty. I'm pretty satisfied with these pictures. Um, 
she's moving too much. Because I dropped down to one fiftieth. Because they were because there was older people walking slower. It's fine. It's showing motion. They're trying to be silly. See, that's actually a pretty decent shot. Even with the blur, because it's kind of neat. You can see that she's moving. It's it's showing the motion. Sometimes you you're fine with some motion blur. You don't need it to completely freeze, right? Sometimes you don't need it to completely freeze. Like this one. This is fine completely freezing. But you don't really need it to completely freeze if they're supposed to be showing motion. You know they're dancing. There's motion. It's fine. Let's get to the end here. I got fireworks shot here at the end. What is this? Okay, here we go. Fireworks shot. Oh, here's a, I'll show you this other shot I got real quick. So this shot here I got of them up on the balcony and I I flashed it from this side. So you see the see the shadow going that way? The flash was over here on the balcony, pointed over at them, and then there was a flash behind them. And we're looking at ISO 800, F3.5, got them all in focus. They're quite a ways away. They're way up there and I went wide. I, so I backed way up on the 85. So that is pretty, pretty daggum slick. I'll put just a hair of noise reduction on it. Look at that. That looks pretty amazing. That's a pretty good shot. It's a, it's a shame because i got to fix up some of this. It's got some busyness, like a wire or something right here. I couldn't see. I didn't notice it. See these pipes, but it still looks pretty good. I got, the, I got the light of the red from the lights underneath from the DJ and the blue up on the thing. I tried a couple. I got a couple shots. They kept facing me, and I was, trying to, I was trying to yell to them. They couldn't hear me. I was yelling to them to face each other and kiss, which is what I wanted them to do was this. So that we'd have the light underneath them. They weren't getting it. <laughs> I tried to tell them it was so loud. They couldn't hear me. All right, so let's go look at these. So I had some shots of them dancing. That's their last dance, but all they did was sit like this. But then I got some shots of them in the fireworks. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, a lot of shadows because of the thing, but this is focused at night. ISO 1600, lit by these sparklers, a little bit of light on the stairs, but that's my flash. I had a flash over here in the corner to try and get them as they came down the steps. See? They came down the steps over here. Let's see if I get any of them on the steps. Yeah, there we go. Look, they're in focus. That's amazing. What's What am I at? Uh, F5.0. Yeah, well, I kept it at F5. 1 60th of a second because of, of the sparklers. But even like this, let's, let's, let's imagine, let's put, because I had 1600, add a little bit of noise reduction, drop the highlights a little bit, but raise them shadows up. Yeah. I mean, that's a shot you can use. Somebody put, what is this, a spider -Man? What is this doing on the thing? Who, I didn't even see that. There's a Spider-Man <laughs> spider purse on the freaking thing behind him. Let's see. They get in front of it. <laughs> Spider-Man lunchbox. All right. Now they're in front of it. See, that's pretty good. His, his face as they come around the corner. See, now, now they're in the dark. But let's see. Let's see if I can fix this. I'm sure I can. Yeah, I got a lot of noise. But let's add a little bit of noise reduction to it. There we go. That works. You can see them coming around the corner. 
or in the dark there. Sorry, my phone went off. So I got them to stop and kiss. He didn't want to stop and kiss either. He was like, "What? why? I was like, stop and kiss. You're in the middle of the thing. He keeps looking. He didn't want to do any, he didn't want to stop and kiss. I don't know why he didn't want to stop and kiss. He wanted to remain looking at me, which was kind of odd. But anyway, you can see what the, you can see what the pictures look like. You can see what the background looks like. You can see all this. Look how good that looks. I'm just doing a little minor, just real minor stuff. A little minor tweaking. Add a little bit of noise reduction. Look at that. That is tack focus on, our, on their eyes. That is sharp. And that was at 1600 ISO, f5.0, 160th of a second. At nighttime, the focusing was, I mean, you can't fault it can't fault the focusing it's it's really really good yeah see this got her he was a little closer what it was a 5.0 but you can see she's sharp he came closer to me that missed focus see that's a missed focus it focused on the background or something but that didn't miss no miss that focus is spot on Look. Yep. So no miss, miss, and then back on focus again. You can't fault it. It's pretty good. Anyway, this is a. I can't believe this lunchbox. Can't believe this lunchbox. Somebody left a lunchbox. <laughs> Actually, I can believe it. It's just funny that somebody left the lunchbox back there. Anyway, so that's my that's my review. Looking at the pictures, I know I've kind of taken some time. People like to see this stuff, though. I like to see this stuff. I want to see what how this camera performs in low light. I want to see how it performs, um, you know, how the focus is in low light. Does it will it hold up? Is it the kind of thing? I mean, what the noise is like at higher ISOs. Higher ISO to me, I'm I'm a ISO particular. I don't want it. I don't want to get a lot of noise. I don't like noise in my images. I don't like grain. A little bit of grain's okay. I like that. That's nice. But a little bit of grain is fine. It's not a big deal. It makes it look kind of filmic. This has a little bit of grain in it. See the little fine grain? There's fine grain all in this image. Um so no noise reduction. Put a tad of noise reduction if you don't like the grain. Now the grain is almost gone. I mean, yeah, it makes other things slightly a little bit more blurry. You know, that wasn't in focus. But she's in perfect focus and smiling. I'm telling you, the customer is going to be happy with this image even if he's not in focus and she is because I can see that somebody's in focus and they can see that it lo it's a good image. It's showing what they did their emotion. They won't like this, so I'm not going to give them this one. But I will give them this one. And I'll try and get rid of the Spider-Man thing behind them. So, anyway, that's that's my take. That's my review. I hope you guys like it. Ew. That's my review. Hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the review. Thumbs down, down if you didn't. If you thought it was trash and thought I should have been more, uh, go through all the features. I have no reason to go through all the features. There's tons of videos out there that go through all the features of the camera. And the, this camera's been out for like a year and a half, two years. I will say this. They're coming out with a mirrorless camera. I think I mentioned this um, last night when I was walking. Um, they're, they're announcing two... I did, and I did talk about this last night. Well, I'm going to talk about it again. They're announcing... Nikon's announcing two mirrorless cameras we know of. Like, I think next month. I, or the end of this month. End of July. They're announcing two mirrorless cameras. One's three thousand dollars, and one's like forty-five hundred dollars or something like that. One's supposed to be twenty in the twenty-something megapixel range, and one will be in the forty-something megapixel range, similar to the Sony A7, 
uh, three and a seven R, uh, a seven R three or whatever a seven R. So there's, there's a, there's one that's, um, ones that ones that a higher megapixel and then one that's a lower megapixel, better low light. Um, whatever. Anyway, Nikon's supposed to announce those. Um, I don't see how it could possibly beat this camera. Uh, for an all-around camera, this thing is just about the most perfect camera I've ever used. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be. Um, I'm not just saying this because I'm a paid shill for Nikon or something. I'm, nobody pays me anything. I I buy my own camera gear. I rent my own camera gear. I use the stuff. I use different lenses. I try everything out. I've tried almost all the different cameras out. I've used Canon. I've used Nikon. I've used Sony. I've used everything. Out of all the cameras I've ever used, this one is by far the best out of any camera I've ever used for the for, for the work I do, for the stuff I do. So for shooting weddings and events, this thing's r ridiculous. Um, you don't... People complain about the large file size. I shot like over a thousand, like maybe 1,500 images on this camera. Yeah, it was a smaller wedding. It was short. The ceremony was short. So it it's not going to have as many pictures. Their dancing was short. They actually weren't a lot of dancing. They actually ended, ended up uh, ending the wedding early because nobody was dancing. And it was getting late and people were leaving. Because you can see they're an older couple. They're not in their 20s. They're in their 30s. So usually when you get couples in their 30s to 40s, the ceremonies, I mean, the receptions don't last as long. If most of their guests are older or if they have young kids, stuff like that. If they're, if they're in their 20s and like early 20s getting married and all their friends are in their early 20s, they're staying late and they're, they're all out there partying. But this one, not so much. It was typical of a wedding of somebody that was in their 30s. They expect it to run until 1230, but they ended up getting out an hour early. This is still going to be the camera that I would probably buy, even over a mirrorless. Does it not? It doesn't focus as well in for video. It doesn't focus at all for video. But I don't focus for video anyway. I hardly ever use autofocus in my video. The only time I use autofocus is for vlogging, and I'm not using this camera for vlogging. Um, I my opinion could change if I got if I if they come out with this mirrorless camera. And it is like as good as this at photography, as good as this one is for photography, but I can also shoot 4K video and have really good autofocus and use it for vlogging and use it for everything, then maybe I will get one. But what I think it would be a smarter thing probably um, would be to have, have this one, the D DA50, as a as a second camera for shooting video so in other words have have like a sony or two for shooting video right and have a da50 that i could shoot video to if i want to i can put it in 4k put it on a long lens and shoot a 4k of vows and stuff like that i can do it on the camera you just have to focus it uh so you have to be standing there with it um which i'm standing there with it anyway um so that could be like a second, a, a secondary camera for shooting video, or it could be a primary video camera, and you could have another. You could have this and a D five hundred. Have D five hundred be the other secondary video, or you could have one of these and the Nikon mirrorless, and have that be your main video, and this is your secondary video. Either way, the price is going to come down on the D eight fifty. I keep looking over here because it's sitting here, and you can't see it. It's in a bag right here. Um, it's in the bag. I keep pointing at it. Anyway. Either way, you're going to be in good shape if you had the D850. Either way, it's still a fantastic camera. So no matter what other camera comes out later, this is still a ridiculously good camera. It's a very capable... It's no one. There's a reason why it won, won awards as Camera of the Year and stuff like that last year. It's it's phenomenal camera. They just haven't been able to get them out to people in the market. So we'll see. Anyway... It's good talking to you, YouTube. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. You know the drill.